Hi everybody, we're in section 2.3 of trigonometry. In this section we're using the calculator to find trig values. So we will learn how to find function values using a calculator and how to find angle values uh, if we're given a function value. Now I want to show you something right off the bat. We have not learned radians yet, but your calculator can work in either radian mode or degree mode. It's two different ways to measure degrees. So most of us have a calculator that has a degree indicator on the screen. Look, look on your calculator screen for a little indicator in the lower right corner that says DEG. But not every, not every calculator has that. So if you're ever working on a calculator that doesn't tell you degrees, what you can do is punch in sine of 90 because we know that sine of 90 degrees is 1 and uh, sine of 90 radians of course is something different so uh, if your calculator is set in degrees it will give you an answer of 1 for that and then you know that you're set in the right mode. Here are the buttons on the calculator that we're going to be using in this lesson. Um, the reciprocal button is here the uh, negative button is here, uh, not, the, not the minus button now, but we usually need the negative button. Here's that degree indicator I was telling you about. If you're not uh, in degrees, it'll say RAD, maybe for radians, but most of the time it's set in degrees by default. And of course, I didn't circle them, but everybody has seen the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons here. In example one, we are going to approximate the value of each expression. Now by approximate, we mean that there's going to be rounding going on. So it's going to give us lots of decimal places and we have to decide how many to keep. Watch in my math lab and it will tell you how many to keep. But um, when we do sine of 49 degrees in 12 minutes, you can of course use the degree minute second button to enter this value, but I usually prefer not to because the degree minute second button you have to push it a couple of times and you have to arrow over and push the equal button extra times to make it work I know that 12 minutes is 12 sixtieths of a degree so I usually enter it that way I push sine and then I push 49 there's no need to tell the calculator that it's degrees because the calculator will already be set in degree mode so I enter 49 plus 12 sixtieths that is 49 degrees in 12 minutes, and so sine of that value is approximately 0 0.7569951, and I've rounded off here at the seventh decimal place. You know, if the next decimal place on the calculator is five or more, we round this digit up, but if it's not five or more, we leave this digit the same. So this is what we came up with. It is approximate. Let's look at part B. And I think it goes without saying that you should have your calculator out doing this along with me because if you don't then it's completely useless exercise. It really makes a difference if you're doing it with the calculator in your hand instead of just listening to me talk about it. So here we go, secant of 97.977 degrees. We do not have a secant button on our calculators. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. So this is where the reciprocal relationships will come in handy. We know that the reciprocal of secant is cosine. So if I want the secant of an angle, I can actually enter cosine of that angle, push the equal button, and then use the reciprocal button and push equal again to get the calculator to flip that number over for us. And this time we get approximately negative 7.2059. Now this is the reciprocal button on our calculators, but on some models it might look like 1 over x. That also could stand for reciprocal. You know the negative 1 exponent um, causes a flip or a reciprocal. So there's that one. Now for part C, it starts off 1 over, and we know that 1 over means a reciprocal. So 1 over the uh, cotangent of 51.4283. In other words, the reciprocal of cotangent 51.4283. But cotangent itself is the reciprocal of tangent. So the reciprocal of the reciprocal of tangent. Now, every time you do reciprocal, you're flipping that number over. So if you do reciprocal twice, 
you've gotten it back where it started. So the reciprocal of, the reciprocal of tangent is really just tangent. And so we just enter that one straight. Uh, tangent of 51.4283. You do not need the degree symbol. Uh, is approximately 1.2539. And then of course part D. Sine of negative 246 degrees. When you enter this, press sine. Push the negative button, not the minus button. 246, you do not need to indicate degrees because the calculator is in degree mode. So we will get approximately 0 0.91355. Remember that all sine values are between negative 1 and positive 1. So this is a valid sine value. And just to take a peek backwards, all secant values are either negative 1 or less, positive 1 or more. So uh, this is a valid secant value because it is less than negative 1. Alright, um, let's see. I wanted to remind you that the negative key must be used, not the minus key that's uh, along the side. The negative key on our calculators is along the bottom of the keyboard. Now let's look at a few examples from the end of the section. These are from page 63. Uh, numbers 13, 15, 17, and 19. Approximate the value of each expression. <clears throat> I really wish that you would pause the video and try these on your own before you listen to me explain them because you, you should be trying them on your own. But now that you've done that, let's go ahead and um, work through these together. So cosecant of negative 317 degrees in 36 minutes. Okay, we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. But also I want you to think about this. Uh, you can use the degree minute second button if you like. It might even be a good thing in this case. Because on a negative angle, you cannot put plus 3660. This is negative, so this actually needs to be minus 36 over 60. Okay, and then I've got the reciprocal button here. So we're doing sine of negative 317 minus 36 over 60 because they're both both parts should be negative. Then we do the reciprocal of that. Please close your parentheses before you push the reciprocal button because if you don't close the parentheses first, it thinks that the reciprocal is part of this number in here, but it's not. So sine, put in your angle, close the parentheses, then reciprocal, then the equal button, and it is approximately 1.4830. Now we know that that's a valid cosecant value because it's more than one. So that's good. Now, 1 over cotangent of 23.4 degrees. We know that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So the reciprocal of, the reciprocal of tangent is simply tangent. And then um, just enter it in the calculator just like that. Should be approximately 0 0.43274. For cos cosine of 77 over sine of 77, I just want you to be careful with your parentheses. So you're going to enter cosine 77. Close the parentheses before you divide. So cosine 77, close the parentheses, divided by sine of 77, press equal. It's approximately 0 0.2309. Or here's something else to think about. We know that cosine over sine is cotangent. So you could just do tangent of 77 and then a reciprocal to get the same answer. And again, I want to emphasize that it is super important for you to close these parentheses before you hit the reciprocal button. Never forget that. Never hit the reciprocal button until you've closed out your function. Alright, now let's look at cotangent of 90 minus 4.72. You can enter it just like this. Well, you can't you do cotangent. you got to do tangent. But we know that this is actually the reciprocal of the answer we want, so we push reciprocal after you close out your function. So tangent of 90 minus 4.72, do the reciprocal. That will give you 0 0.08257 approximately. But I also just want to remind you about this. We've looked at the cofunction identities already, and you know that um, 
the the cotangent of a complement is equal to the tangent of the angle. So this is the complement of 4.72. Therefore, the, the cotangent of the complement of 4.72 is equal to the tangent of 4.72. So, you know, just using your co-function identities, you know, might simplify what you're entering here. This or this. Both give you the same answer. And I hope that on your calculator you'll enter it both ways and think about why they give you the same answer. And you start to make those connections in your mind, you can maybe find shortcuts that it's impossible for me to teach you. Now we're going to use the calculator to find an angle when we're given a function value. We're going to need two buttons. We're going to need the second button here Anytime you want to access the functions that are written above the keys, you need the second button. And we're going to use the inverse trig function. So you, it's hard to see here, but it's inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. They are written above sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, example two. Use a calculator to find an angle in the interval 0 to 90 degrees that satisfies each condition. So if you want to find an angle whose sine is 0 0.967709115, you have to rewrite the function in inverse form. So we would say the sine inverse of this function value equals our angle. So now let's do that on the calculator. So you're going to push second sine enter your function value and press equal and it gives you approximately 75.4 degrees. This, the inverse sign always will tell you an angle. So on inverse sign you're entering a function value and you're getting back an angle. Now let's look at secant of theta equals 1.0545829. We do not have an inverse secant button on our calculators. So it's best to convert this to cosine first. If secant is 1.054 blah blah blah, then cosine is the reciprocal of all of that number. Okay, so I put a little negative 1 here to indicate reciprocal. If secant is this number, cosine is the reciprocal of that number. Now I'm going to write it in inverse cosine form. So cosine inverse of this reciprocal equals our angle. Cosine inverse of this reciprocal equals our angle. If you enter it just like that, now this time you do need to push the reciprocal button before you close the parentheses because we really do want the reciprocal of this function value. So we'll say inverse cosine of the number's reciprocal equals, and it's 18.51 degrees. Now notice that when we want to determine the secant of an angle, we do the reciprocal of the cosine. To determine an angle that has a given secant value, we use the inverse cosine of the reciprocal of the value. And I don't really want you to memorize this, but I would like for you to work several of each type of problem so that you really understand the difference. Anytime you are looking for an angle, you're going to be using the inverse function. Now I have a couple more that I've picked out for us from page 63. It says use a calculator to find an angle theta in the interval 0 to 90 degrees that satisfies each condition. So here's tangent of theta equals 1.4739716. So we are looking for theta, we are looking for an angle therefore we must use an inverse function so the inverse tangent of this number equals our angle you enter it just like this second tangent of our number equals and the angle is approximately 55.85 degrees now for secant of theta equal to 2.7496222 we first want to write it in cosine form so cosine of theta equals the reciprocal of that number. 
Now we can write it in inverse cosine form. The inverse cosine of the reciprocal of that number equals our angle. So second cosine of that reciprocal equals approximately 68.67 degrees. Now we have a couple more expressions to just practice with. Let's look at sine 35 times cosine 55 plus cosine 35 times sine 55. The most important thing you need to remember on an expression like this is you've got to close your parentheses before you start the next function. It's easy to forget because you don't have to type the opening parenthesis and so sometimes people forget to put the, the uh, closing one in but you really have to remember that. So let's just punch it in exactly as you see it here. Remember to close the parentheses and you find out it equals 1. Now something interesting to think about is that 35 plus 55 equals 90 degrees and the sine of 90 degrees equals 1. See, So you can take any two angles that you like here and plug them in and what you get is actually the sine of their sum. So uh, the sine of 35 times the cosine of 55 plus cosine 35 times sine 55 equals the sine of 35 plus 55. It's kind of an interesting formula that we'll get to study closer in chapter 5, but that's the way it works. Now let's look at sine squared 36 plus cosine squared 36. To enter sine squared, I want you to enter sine 36 and close the parenthesis and then square it. And um, then to enter cosine squared of 36, cosine 36, close the parenthesis and then square it. What you're squaring is not the, the 36, but it's the cosine of 36. And here what you're squaring is not 36, it's the sine of 36. And that equals 1. Now, it, we're going to find out, or you, you may remember from an earlier section, we had a, an identity that said sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of an angle equals 1. So I don't think this is a surprise to us. So we're at the end of this section now, and we've done all the examples that they gave us, plus several. And, uh, you know, I know that the, that the calculator seems pretty easy to use, but I do not want you to take it for granted, because um, just having a calculator does not mean you know how to use it. You need to do some practice, make sure you understand when to use the reciprocal button, when to use the uh, inverse function buttons, and most of all, just repetition. There's I keep saying it over and over, but there's no substitute for practice so I really encourage you to try out the calculator on some different exercises in the book and online and make sure that you understand how to use it.